So, this is uh, the first part of my presentation. I, uh, you can see it on the video poster. And as it's total harmless matrix, I call it. Well, you know about surveys and uh, what they always say, things like record low in smoking, not allowing rising X percent of uh, waving. So nobody really knows what these surveys say. What do they say? How do they compare to other surveys uh, from other years? You get these numbers raised, these numbers fallen. What we need is a single number that shows how good is the survey for the public, uh, how is the public health? And to do that, we need to identify the, uh, the different behaviors in how significant they become uh, for physical harm in the future. And the idea is I only focus on physical harm if that behavior is kept for the rest of the life. That's unrealistic, but it eliminates the need for speculation. And here you can see how, we, uh, how I, the analysis gets to combinations on behavior types and well, it's a lot of categories uh, that develop, but they are sensible. And that's the risk factor that will be assigned to each category. <coughs> and I pulled this out of my head, and from uh, <coughs> reasonable estimates, different, uh, the different categories get different risk factors. Compared to smoking, how risky is that behavior if you do it for the rest of your life? That's all. And what you now do is you simply get the statistics to align the people in these uh, categories and multiply the, multiply the risk factor with the uh, percentage, add it all up, and you get a single number that depicts the total harm risk. And I did it for the NYTS USCDC data. And as you can see, the table builds, and you see the uh, columns in the height that you are used, but slightly different uh, distributions, since I use different categories. <coughs> and what you here see is the blue line. The blue line is the total harm risk matrix the numbers that I calculated for each survey from, uh, from each of these uh, years. And you see the 2011 survey uh, had a risk level of 10.9, a risk metric of 10.9, while it's, it's uh, sinking even if the total numbers in the end keep sometimes growing, the risk, the risk itself, the total risk, sank or stay constant. So we have we can we can say from 2016 to 2018, even with the flu epidemic, and uh, the alarming rates in uh, vaping by 40% or whatever, the total risk 
for harm for the youth hasn't changed, isn't gone up. So we have no problem for the uh, for the harm of the youth, even if the alarming the race is uh, is alarming. It's countered by the record low. And here we have a number that tells it. And if we could do this <coughs> metric for other statistics, uh, it's a lot of work to uh, reschedule the, uh, reclassify the data to these categories. But it should be possible, and then we could uh, easily compare statistics from different countries with this number. We know, we, we will know if Sweden, the Swedish statistic is better for public harm, uh, concerning the, the public harm, the total harm risk, the, or if the US happens to be better. We know. We, uh, we don't have to rely on separate columns uh, in the statistics that are isolated and maybe even uh, differently calculated. Please do the work. It's pretty simple, I, I think. And I wonder, I'm wondering why others haven't uh, thought about it yet. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Robert. Uh, anyone got any questions on that? This is, uh, it must have taken you months to, to do. Thank you very much. I read through your full report. But uh, how difficult would it be to make, uh, let's say, a country a unique report for, for Sweden or for UK or whatever? If you got uh, survey data in detail, uh, well, I, I'm pretty sure good statisticians can, uh, can do it with uh, process data. I can't. I can only work with basic data. If I got records uh, per participant, uh, as in the NYTS, uh, and, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, then I can uh, redistribute the uh, columns into these categories. We calculate the uh, as long as the data, is, any data is present, I can recalculate them uh, correspondingly, and then it, it's a matter of a few hours. If I get if I get the data in. Uh, in a form that I can use the spreadsheet form. Thank you. Okay, thanks, thanks very much, Norbert. Um, we move on now to the last uh, part of the day. Um, Charles Yates is going to talk to us about the Vape It Forward campaign. Thank you.